Why do women in China search for men outside of China? I mean, why do they do that? Why not just marry a nice man from Wuhan and be done with it? Why would you use an agency to try to find someone from the United States or from Canada or from Australia or somewhere? Historically, China is polygamous, meaning that historically wealthy men had, had multiple concubines. wives. They had concubines. Right. Right. Um, so they would have one official wife and then they would have um, a number of concubines depending on how much money he had and this was all legal and it was not outlawed until 1949 and today there's an informal revival of this traditional Ooh. tradition of mistress keeping and some of the women that have been in my study are women who were these informal mistresses of wealthy politicians and businessmen and then by the time they hit 40 oh. They have been aged out of that role, and mm -hmm. he may have bought you a house, a car, right? Or an apartment. So he may have given you something, but, right, but you, he doesn't have to. There's no structure that forces well, him. Well, if he did, and then maybe you would not have entered into that relationship with him. So it's an informal. Is there it's a contract a, up front when you enter into that? Or? No, no, no it's legal. Informal. It's all informal it's all because informal. this is not legal. This is not. This is all now it's not illegal. illegal. It's, yeah, okay. Right now, it's illegal. So I divide my women into two different class sectors. So uh, one group, which I call the financially privileged, the other is more financially deprived. And the privileged women became very financially successful in the post-reform era. So they're advantaged financially, but a lot of their Chinese ex-husbands, once they become wealthy, they traded the wives in for a younger woman or they cheated on them. So they, they feel that it's harder for them to then remarry a man of that stature. And even if they could find someone that's willing to marry them, he's likely to cheat. So they're looking for a nice guy and they feel that nice guys um, don't exist in China. And then <laughs> there's are the men who are uh, not, sorry, there are women who are not as financially well off and those women experienced uh, economic decline in the post-reform era. So a lot of these were women who worked in state-owned factories back when they were younger. And with the reform and opening up, a lot of those factories shut down. So the women essentially lost their jobs and so did their husbands. But the problem is that a lot of their husbands, after losing their jobs, instead of going out and starting your small business or getting a job, some of these men got into um, drugs and alcoholism and they were not able to get their life together. So these women were divorcing their husbands who were shirking their family responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, and they want to look for someone who's more uh, responsible and they feel that it's hard to find in China based on their previous experience so they want to move to the west with the Chinese Cultural Revolution which happened in over the span of 10 years 1966 to uh, 1976 and I think a lot of people because of the upheaval and the destruction of family because of the, the political crisis that had taken place in the country, I, th I feel a lot of people feel that a lot of the love and the bonds in their um, lives have been destroyed. And then with the advent of capitalism and capitalism coming in, um, a lot of people feel that money is the only thing that matters. So there's a lot of rampant materialism in China, actually, in the post-reform era. And people don't feel bad or sad or upset if they have to leave their home country because so much of the, the good things, um, the, the love and the bonds have been wiped out. So they feel, well, Keep I have so here. many sad memories in my home country. I don't give up, I don't have any qualms leaving. So among financially successful men, they're in this tricky situation where they're used to dating a man of a certain caliber. So they're, they don't want to just date the average ordinary Chinese, Chinese. men. But then those those high status, financially successful men want 20 year olds. They want 20 year olds. So these women <laughs> feel like, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to seek something else somewhere else and leave China. That's their solution Please. to the yeah. dilemma. Um, speaking of this, one woman comes to mind. So she had married a man who, um, who other people at the agency says is out of her league in the way of looks because he looks like a Western movie star, oh. like Tom Cruise. And okay. um, but he was a few years younger and less affluent, and she fell in love, and that she felt that that was the relationship she wanted because she owned 
a lot of property in China, and for her, it's just a divestment of her assets from China to the U.S. Right? If she's going to invest in a business or buy a property in the U.S., it's it's, 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 the money is not disappearing. She's just moving it from one location to another. And she gets to be with the person that is kind to her and that she's attracted to. So why not, right? So the, you, you can see some women, that's something they want. And then there are other women who feel that they may want someone within their social economic class. So they share a similar taste in fine dining or travel, so on and so forth. And I see those women marrying Western men of similar class level in their home countries. So I see both. Okay. It's not a um, one answer to fit all. Okay. And how would you um, describe the phenomenon of the forgotten woman in China? The, the, woman, the women that are the leftover women? Um, that we hear about. I mean, is that a real thing? And what would you what would you say about that? You know, interestingly, the leftover women is a real phenomenon in China, and I think the term, at least, it used to refer mostly to uh, professional women in their late twenties and early thirties, or even mid thirties, who are single, professionally successful, and um, wanting to marry. So actually, we don't see too many of those at the agencies I'm looking at. The agents in the agencies where I study, it's, it's mostly middle-aged divorced women who are seeking second chance marriages okay. or mistresses of very wealthy Chinese businessmen who have aged out of their, their uh, uh, job, quote their unquote, role. their role. He has a new mistress. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Who's younger. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So the, the technically, if you're thinking about leftover women and what I just described, those women are not the primary clientele at my agency. And I think part of the reason is because they have this robust career that they want to develop in China. And they feel that if they move to a different country, it's hard to take that with them. So they're, those are the one, not the ones that are seeking to marry and migrate. But for That's the older women, yeah. right, they've already lived their lives. So many of the women that are financially successful, they already have that success. They don't necessarily, if you're already 50 years mm -hmm. old, you've already done everything you wanted to do in life. So it, hey, well, not hopefully yet. not, not, right? yeah. <laughs> not right. everything, but for, like, yeah. there's some things yeah. you got to get to still, but okay. Yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Well, so the man wants to, yeah, it's not more of an, an economic thing. thing. Do not so worry uh, that she has no, as much or more money. No, than no, they no. Do. A lot of men today are very happy to date women who is my friend financially successful than himself. Oh, it's looked okay. at as something that's positive. Okay. Yeah, okay. because, and there are lots of men that are willing to date, um, older, more financially okay. successful, successful women, but it's the women that actually don't want to date down. That's why the left, a lot of the leftover women feel like they're stuck because they're not willing to date a man who's less financially successful than themselves, but then the ones that are as financially successful think they're too old. That's essentially ah, what's happening. Okay. So in China today, parents are expected to purchase homes or at least put down a down payment for your children. And especially if you have a boy, because the boy is expected to mm. own a home in order to propose to a girl because oh. she would want him to have that ready to go at the time of marriage. And it's usually the man's responsibility or the man's side of the family. So because of that, uh, having a boy can be a big financial burden down the line. And this is why uh, when it comes to remarriage, a lot of men are not interested in marrying a woman who ha has a son because that means that he will have to help um, fund for the son's home in before he marries. Very interesting. I did not know that. Uh, so I wish we had that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have to think about that. So if you are a woman in China and you have a daughter, you're telling me that it would be easier. It would be easier. There would be more men interested in a second marriage with you versus if you had a son. And that's a real social fact. We had a, we had a gentleman that we interviewed not too long ago um, who went to China um, on his own. He met a woman just writing through our site and he went and he met her and he just fell in love with her and he stayed there for a few months and he got married to her while he was there. And then he brought her back. And about two years later, he called us and said, John, I just want to let you guys know how happy we are. Oh, how thankful we nice. are that you guys helped us. And then we actually went and did an interview with them. And then Tanya and I later went and had dinner with them because they live about an hour up north. Um, 
And he was telling me how great her family was in China and how supportive her family was in China when he came over to meet her. I mean, they, he said they were like my family. You know, very shortly they were opening, they were warm, they were friendly, supportive, really supportive. Do you think in general, uh, the, the family of these Chinese women are supportive when they go to meet a foreign man? I think for the most part, yes. I've seen occasionally some examples where the family has not been supportive, but the majority of them have, and including the, the stepchildren, they're oftentimes very supportive because they've seen their mother live a very difficult life, struggle to support them, mm -hmm. or struggle through the father's affairs, and they're just finally happy that their mom can have a build a life for herself after raising the children. So they really want this to work out, and they are really happy to for the mom. Okay. And the, the parents as well, right? For these yeah. older women that are getting their second chance marriage so that they want to be supportive. And also China is a very family oriented society. So once there's a marriage in the works, everyone wants this to last. Good, okay. Yeah, there's not a big divorce culture in China, at least not in the traditional culture. Divorce is not something that people feel comfortable with. Mm, okay. It's right. kind of like the Philippines. Where, yeah, uh, divorce is really, yeah, not it's illegal taboo. for a long yeah. time. Yeah. It was illegal, yeah, in the Philippines yeah. for a long time. It's really hard to find someone who you are sexually compatible with and emotionally compatible with and intellectually compatible with and finding someone who is compatible with you in all these different ways and, and to have a lot in common with you in terms of hobbies and interests. So it's a, it comes down to a numbers game, right? The more people you open yourself up to, the greater your chance of finding someone that is a good more, fit. A good fit for you. Oh, you so, warmed my heart with that because I've been saying that for years that it's a numbers game, guys. It is, it a, is numbers a numbers game. game. It you, is. You have to meet a lot of people. It amazes me that, like you said, I think on your side of the freeway, these guys stay in these small little towns and, okay, Mary and Sue. Well, let's see. Mary or Sue. Mary or Sue. You know, and, and it's like, really? I mean, to me, you've got to meet a lot of different people to try to find. And maybe, maybe you have a hundred soulmates. I don't know. Maybe it's not just that one soulmate out there. Maybe there's a lot of different people that you can connect with on all those different levels that you mentioned. But, you know, you'll never know until you try, until you go. And the worst thing that can happen is when you put yourself out there and you put yourself in these different situations, things happen. Good, bad, and ugly, but they happen. And you're living, you're having life. And, and that's so great than just to... I don't know, just to hide from it, you know, at least go experience it. Even if it's negative, it can be good because you're going to learn from it. Right. And learn not what to or learn what not to do yeah. in the future. Learn uh, things about what you like and don't like in a person or in a relationship setting. Right. Because how do you know what you like until you know what you don't like or. Absolutely. Right. You guys are great. We're going to have to do this more often. You guys are really <laughs>